ordained minister, have served pastoral charges, worked as a conference personnel minister, and and then in the general counsel office, um, in ministry and employment policies and services for 12 years. And now I'm doing work um, primarily supporting two things, supporting congregations in um, imagining uh, their future, whether it involves um, what, whatever stage of the life cycle they might might be finding themselves in and uh, helping them to do that well as best I can along with some other colleagues and collaborators and I spend the rest of my time doing music so I'm also a church musician and uh, doing that as well and I'm in Napanee Ontario and uh, this is where my home base is uh, and uh, has been for the last 24 years. Nice. Great, thank you. Um, Shahida, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I am Shahida Quinnan, and I represent Trinity United Church in Winnipeg. And uh, I'm a member of this church, and we would like to host a um, fun filled afternoon next year in September 2018 uh, for our community in trying to get to know our community and uh, to find out the needs and that we could be of some assistance to each other. Great. So I hope. Thank you. Well, thank you, Shahida. Wonderful. Um, uh, Peter, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Peter. I'm calling from Markham, Ontario. And I work with Carla on Community Innovative Hub. And that means taking a spiritual institution and creating a hub for small business, uh, social innovators, social enterprises, in terms of using the unused and underutilized space for them to be able to grow and use the unused space in the community. So our goal is to spread that model across 300 locations in the next five years so that we have uh, in the pilot that I'm doing in Markham we have 18 hubsters and their role is engaging and giving back to community so the same thing with the church it's engaging and giving back to community and that's uh, one of the major benefits now, I just happened to have a book that Carla and I did called The Give Back Community. <laughs> and what that's all about is how to set up a social enterprise. And the proceeds are going to the uh, United Church Foundation Give Back Fund to increase the number of hubs across Canada. Okay, um, thank you. And um, all right, okay, I was just engaged with the assisting Tom who's joined us and looks like you've, uh, you can hear us now. So that's great. I um, can, yes. Great, welcome. Um, Dithia, would you like to introduce yourself? I am a United Church minister about 45 minutes north of Napanee, where Joe is. And I am quite excited about the possibility of our church becoming more engaged with the community. At the moment, I share that excitement with only one other person in my church, but we try to keep each other, each other's spirits up and pray for some engagement, some more engagement from the congregation. I love it. I love how you frame that, Dithia. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And um, yeah, look forward to ha enjoying the rest of the conversation with you today. Um, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself and say where you're from and what brings you on the call today? <laughs> Uh, I'm on the call because I was invited, of course, and I'm interested in, you know, what we do as church and how we be church and uh, live out our faith in ever-changing times, it seems. Uh, I'm in Calgary at Deer Park United Church, and um, 
just simply uh, value the conversation. Okay, so um, uh, just I'll take maybe pause a minute here to just um, give some kind of um, introductions to the technology before we, we continue. So Tom, if, I think if you look along the bottom, if you have video on your um, laptop or desktop, there's start a video. Yeah, it says start video. And uh, then we would be able to see you as well, which would be lovely. Um, there you are. Can you see me now? Yep. That's great. Hi. Hi. Yeah. And, um, and so in terms of that piece, um, uh, I would encourage folk when you're not actually speaking, if you don't mind muting, um, just so that um, if there's any, you know, background noise, if the cat happens to visit in the middle of the call, we, uh, we don't need to uh, share that experience. Um, and um, also to let you know that we are recording this call um, and that it will be um, being made available to people who are not able to join us today. And um, I think that's probably all. One piece to mention, you'll notice at the top or on, of your, on your screen, there's a space where you can rearrange how you see people. So you can either have it as speaker view where you see the person who's speaking as the largest image, or you can set it up as gallery view where you kind of see all the faces um, at this stage with the number of people that are on the call. So feel free to kind of um, play with that and, uh, and find um, what works for you. Okay, um, so uh, Christine, I'll just invite you to introduce yourself. Sarnia, Ontario, where I live, and um, uh, I'm here uh, because of my involvement in a project called Into the Promise, in which I'm working with some congregations in uh, reconnecting with their neighborhood um, through a, a variety of listening and experimenting. Um, experiences. Great. Okay. So I'll just introduce myself for, for those of you that um, haven't been on a call before. Well, I think everybody here probably has, but my name is Sarah Arthurs and I'm based in um, Calgary, Alberta. I'm a member of Hillhurst United Church and have been um, hanging out with the edge a bit through New Scoop YYC, which is a um, digital media co-op that does generative journalism based on appreciative inquiry. So in Calgary, we're trying to help create the world we want through the stories we tell. Um, in that journey, we discovered this platform and uh, came, came to Edge and said, wow, would this be of any value to you in helping share the story of the amazing stuff that's happening across the country? And they were interested in that. So this is our kind of um, experiment with this process. So, um, so welcome, everybody. Um, one other comment, you'll be receiving um, a survey at the end of our call. We'd really encourage you to fill that out. I'm getting great feedback, which is really helpful about these calls. So please um, complete that and support us in this kind of innovation journey. And now at this point, I think what I would like to do is um, begin by giving kind of um, Tom and Christine and um, Joe, right, um, each seven minutes to kind of, um, if you could each take seven minutes and speak to what the project is that you are working on and um, to share with us kind of what's, what's bubbling, um, what's, what's exciting, how do you see this being kind of, um, what's it, what's it, what is it emerging to? So um, maybe we'll start, um, Joe, with you. And uh, if you'd be willing to, um, to kind of introduce us to the work that you're doing with Art of Hosting and um, and kind of the fit you see for that with the church as it's kind of, well, the church is always on the cusp if we're alive and awake, but as we're particularly on the cusp of things at this point. So um, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Okay. Did Sorry, did Martin introduce himself? Oh, I'm so glad. Did I miss you? Okay, thank you, Joe. Martin, please jump in. Okay, I am Martin, and actually my wife is sitting beside me, sharing the other earbud. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I'm on holidays, as I mentioned, and I also have three dogs here, so I'm trying to keep things muted and organized from the usual chaos. But I'm the minister at Hillcrest uh, United Church, and I happen to uh, uh, really enjoy these webinars, and I'm particularly interested in hosting, because my church does a lot of networking. 
Uh, I have like community gardens, the brownies, uh, counseling for government employees, Narcotics Anonymous. Uh, we are actually connected to the library, which is across from the church. And uh, my wife and I are actually going to play there tomorrow at one of their music festivals. And uh, as you can see, hosting is what I do most of the time now in ministry. I mean, the building is kind of just like Grand Central Station. So that's why I'm here to see if I can do a better job. That's great. Thank you. That was a wonderful segue into your, your um, sharing. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Martin had been chatting a little bit as we were just all coming online, so I think it felt like you'd already uh, partly introduced yourself, but I, I didn't remember the rest of it there. Um, so uh, my background is, um, as, I, as I mentioned in my introduction, I, I work with, I've worked in pastoral ministry with uh, three different uh, pastoral charges. Um, I worked in a te uh, te telecommunication um, startup company early 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 on so this kind of thing that we're doing today we were doing something similar to this um without the video uh portion of it but back in uh about 1990 so like 27 years ago and which was kind of cutting edge but that also made it really pioneering and, and difficult to break into so i'm really happy to be part of this conversation in this format because it's kind of the evolution of what i have been involved with with for a long time um, I also worked as a conference personnel minister and then in the general counsel office all around personnel um, issues, uh, ministry personnel and ministry related um, work. But um, w what, I, what I was missing, um, getting some opportunity for, but somewhat missing is just that engagement with uh, neighborhoods and communities and local congregational work in those other roles that I was, was in. Um, but at the same time, picking up um, um, a certain uh, degree of uh, knowledge and interest and skills related to um, that work. So uh, in my uh, de departure from the General Council, I've teamed up with um, uh, a few different colleagues, but my, the one that I work with the most is Alan Reeve, who was also going to be on this call today, but he's, he's on another video conference <laughs> concurrent to this right now. So, um, so I'm here representing both of us. But Alan Reeve and I, uh, began exploring about uh, maybe two between two and three years ago, um, working with um, the 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 broad umbrella um, of of practices that have become known throughout the world as the art of, the art of hosting. And art of hosting is really a it, it it's two things. It's um it's it's an understanding. It's it's a framework and an understanding of the domain or the context within which we find ourselves today, um, not only in the church, but also in, in any other organization or industry or commerce or, 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 or government organizations. Um, so it helps us understand the context or the domain in which we're working to better understand that uh, context. Um, so it's, it's, it's in part a framework, but it's also in part then a collection of practices um, which exist independently on, on their own, um, but are brought together into, a, um, into a, a collection of practices which then help us to, to live appropriately within that context that we find ourselves. So I'll start with the first bit, which is um, understanding the context. One of the premises of Art of Hosting is that, um, is that much of the domain that we live and move and work and minister in um, is Com is complex. Um, complexity is the domain that, it, that, that is unordered. It's an unordered domain. And because it's unordered, you can't uh, figure out, you can't predict the future based on analysis or by observing causes and effects. Causes and effects are too complex for you to be able to study them and then predict a future state. So we, we've, we've been frustrated, you know, in the church because we often make plans and those plans don't, they don't seem to work or, or we expect some kind of an outcome because of our efforts and, and we don't achieve those efforts and we can't figure out why. And part of the answer to that in our framework is it's because you're dealing in the complex domain and you're coming ab about it in a way that's not, that's not particularly effective. So in, in the complex domain, which is the domain of organic things and, and human beings and social systems and, and our own um, engagement with, uh, 
multiple players and stakeholders like you know, businesses and political organizations and other so all the different organizations that we're trying to to interact with um, any one of those can can make a, a decision or a choice or or some new technology can be created um, it, you, you know the just to illustrate the complexity of the society I, you know if you could have predicted 10 years ago that we would be using this technology or that you would have a smartphone in your pocket or your purse. Um, you, you know, you wouldn't likely have been able to predict uh, in detail what that would look like. And you certainly wouldn't have been able to predict the impact uh, on society that this communication revolution is having. So that it's all happening in complexity. So the way that we, that, that which brings me to the practices. So what practices can we use as communities of faith in order to be effect, effectively engaged in the, com, the complex domain. Um, the, the, the practices are, are some of those that many of you who are on this call and, and others that you know are already using. Art of Hosting simply brings them together in, in kind of a, a system and says what's the most appropriate way to host a conference to do is you need to probe probe your environment and then sense what that environment is telling you what bit of data that you can gain from it and then and then respond to it and then repeat that again so you're continually probing and sensing and responding as opposed to analyzing which you would do in a com complicated domain where you can predict cause and effect so if you're building an airplane you you can analyze the system and you can predict results and then you can you can uh, through analysis and then through responding you can build something that will work so in, Joe, in complex i'd like to ask to you a that. question joe yeah um, can you give us an example of a community that has used this approach um at this point yes so so that the the sort of the group of of practices i'll just name them and then give you an example um, the group of practices includes things like appreciative inquiry, which is, an, which is a, a set of practices, but also a, a, an approach. It includes um, World Cafe, which is also, you know, goes by other names, um, depending on where it's applied. But that cafe style where people talk together in groups of four and then move around and talk some more, move around, and then harvest the insights that come from those conversations. It involves um, open space sometimes. It involves so open space technology where, where people identify a particular thing that they want to go deeper with and, and gather around with a group of people around that conversation. But in all of these practices, essentially it involves bringing together many, many voices that all have wisdom and, and stories to tell because storytelling is certainly a part of the, um, the way in which you probe and, and, and sense is often through storytelling. So we encourage, uh, we often have a question in World Cafe or open space that, that evokes some storytelling. Because you can't predict the future, you have to start with what you're doing in the present and try and amplify what you believe is working or what's effective. So part of it, you can't do that without telling stories about what it is that you are doing and what seems to be creating the results that you want. So we were working with a, Okay, so Joe, I'm sorry, I need, to, I need to pause you there, and we'll come back to your example in a minute, but I want to make sure we keep kind of moving through and, and, and giving everybody um, some time. So okay. um, thank you. That was a, a great context, and uh, was really I found that really helpful um, for someone who's been aware of the name, but not the actual content, so that's been really useful. Um, Christine, I wonder if you would like to go next and to share some of the work that you've been doing with Into the Promise and, uh, and what's been happening there. A number of the underlying um, assumptions and, um, uh, yeah, underlying assumptions that Joe and, and um, Alan are working with are also underlie uh, Into the Promise. But um, so uh, this pro project, it's an experiment really, is um, developed out of research I had done um, across the United Church of what was the state of lay leadership training. Uh, what, what was happening and what, um, what needed to be happening. And um, 
became apparent that that lay leaders were taking a larger and larger role in leading uh, congregations and that um, but whatever was happening with them was part of a bigger picture of churches having to figure out uh, how to be the church in what Joe calls a complex situation and I um, picked up the term from Alan Roxburg calling a, a, play, a time of discontinuous change and so um, again as Joe said if it used to be you could sort of do your analysis and predict what the future would be in a time of discontinuous change you, you can't do that because there's too many things changing on too many different levels and you don't know uh, the future doesn't follow directly from the past so um, out of that developed this pro process whereby um, we gather we invite um, each con a number of congregations um, to uh, have three or four people who are willing to engage in a process of um, learning how to listen, how to listen uh, to God, to each other, and to their neighborhood in order to discern what the Spirit is doing and where the Spirit is leading them. And so we've been um, uh, working with probably I think we're at nine congregations at this stage in, in two clusters, one in Bay of Quinte Conference and one of Waterloo Presbytery. And these small groups of people in each congregation have been learning how to listen, um, which is, um, they're discovering that is a very difficult thing for United Church people, United Church Canada people to do. We're used to doing and to having projects and programs and plans and to not to you know step back from that and learn how to listen has been quite challenging for them um, out of that listening they discern where the spirit is leading them and then they're they've been doing that for about uh, the listening and discerning for about 12 months and now they're beginning to do some experiments um, as in their neighborhoods and these are very um, small simple lightweight kind of experiments but just to test out, okay, have we discerned what the Spirit is saying to us um, in, in, uh, correctly? And those experiments are often based in um, relationships, developing relationships. Whatever they do, the whole, the point of it, um, the, the, the activity becomes a vehicle for developing deeper relationships with people outside the normal church circles. And so they're beginning to um, experience um, holy moments as they encounter uh, on a deeper level people that they normally would not have encountered. Um, can you explain what uh, you mean, can you explain what you mean by holy moments? Well, just moments when I mean they go into a situation um, alert and attentive to what the spirit. Uh, what God is already doing in the lives of the people they're encountering. And um, when they do that, um, the um, events happen in which they sense that God is present in those moments that God is active, has brought them together for that time and that purpose uh, to, to meet this other person. And that they are connecting um, at a, a level of, of a, of um, shalom or, or of um, a, a moment of deep community, deep communion. So once, as they do their experiments, they're also learning to reflect on those experiments and testing out saying, okay, what is God saying to us about what it means to be the church in a new day, in a new age? The, um, the interestingly, while they thought they were, they felt, for much of the time like they weren't doing anything they have realized that god was busy active in their lives changing the way they see um, uh, their ordinary lives changing the way they see their church changing the way they interact with people and um, their church is also interestingly how the culture has begun to shift um, in many of their congregations so there's a new energy a new enthusiasm um, about being the church, um, a willingness, new willingness to risk and to try different things. 
So we're just in the midst of that um, experiment. We'll finish by about April or May of 2018 and see where we go from there. Can you give us an example of, um, of what the experiments have looked like that one particular group has, 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 uh, has done? Well, one, in one group, uh, the, um, they had been doing a lot of walking around their neighborhood, praying, asking God to show them what, they, uh, what God uh, wanted them to see. And so as their experiment, they decided to, that they would hold a, a meetup group. I don't know if people are familiar with meetup groups, but it's it, it's a um, you you post on this in these meetup group sites some activity, and anybody is who wants to join is welcome to join in that activity, and you just all show up at the place and time designated, and uh, you know that that's your meetup group, and you do whatever was was. Uh, mentioned in in the invitation, so one group uh, started a meetup group that would walk, um, take a walk through uh, the Guelph area, I think it was, uh, um, on a Sunday afternoon. They had about twenty people sign up, and, and that was their that was the first um, experience of their experiment. So I'm waiting to hear back from them how that. Was. That's great. Well, thank you, Christine, very much. Um, Tom, I'd like to move to you. And um, if you'd be willing to, um, to share kind of what has been evolving in your um, uh, kind of participation and work with Deer Park United in Calgary. And okay, if, thank you. If you're willing to come a little bit, oh, that's better. Now we can see okay. you. Okay, you can see me better and uh, I'll sit up straight. I was too relaxed. Sure, that's great. Um, yeah, Deer Park, uh, we've done a lot of work over the past few years, uh, primarily using uh, community asset mapping and appreciative inquiry uh, to be in touch with first our people within the congregation. Uh, so our journey really started about three, three and a half years ago when uh, my colleague uh, left her position here as the second ordained minister and at that time, when we went through the joint needs assessment uh, work, we decided that we would hire a social worker, um, who has been with us now about two and a half years. Uh, and we have done so many uh, things, we, we can't keep up. I mean, that's uh, one thing we're finding in, in Calgary right now is a lot of agencies that provide help and support uh, want to get people involved in community endeavors and work, and that's great. That's a good thing to do. Uh, and because of that, they've really backed away from helping people with basic needs. And that's left a big gap for us, I guess, in a way that's fortunate, but it's very unfortunate because we're discovering people are not able to be involved in their communities in a significant way when they're facing food insecurity, when they're facing unemployment, when they're in poverty. And so our work has been helping with basic needs, helping to build a sense of um, support that enables people to move forward in their lives so that they can take part in other initiatives uh, by other groups. And uh, so we do things, um, we work with many groups, Aspen County and Community Network Services. We work with the city of Calgary, uh, we work with uh, the local area schools, the library. Um, and we've just got so many things, local businesses, uh, to, to help people in so many ways uh, that we're really kind of swamped. Uh, and you know, I don't even have time to sometimes sit down and say, okay, what, what is the art of hosting? You know, <laughs> I would love to find out more about that. It sounds really exciting, uh, Joe. Uh, I would like to know more about Into the Promise. Um, because I think there are more tools and uh, more practices that would help us uh, do what we're doing uh, in, in our area. Uh, we also are working with uh, St. Andrews United Church, who several years ago sold their building and retained the proceeds from the sale of that property to do regional ministries. And one of the most successful ministries we're doing with them and that they're supporting with us as an outreach to our youth and our community. Now we're working with a lot of uh, people who are new to Canada, 
uh, people in poverty. Uh, we're in a unique place, and we decided um, a long time ago that we had to love our neighborhood, that we had to reach out and, and be with our people, do that walk around, uh, uh, Christine, that, that you spoke of. Uh, and because we're right beside a low-income housing project. Uh, there's another one a few blocks down the road. Uh, and we found out that God is calling us to, to love our neighbor. Uh, and so that's, that's where we are, and we're doing so many things. We do the community engagement, for example. Uh, one of our most successful recently was we have pizza with a point, uh, which, uh, you know, the slices of pizza, you know, are pointed. And um, ah! we feed the people, uh, they come, and we have that conversation. And, you know, I didn't know I was uh, doing anything special when we had people in groups of four and move them around, but it's just something that came to our mind. Uh, so good to know we're following some practices, I guess. But the practice we've always followed is storytelling. You know, we ask, well, what's your story? Um, you know, what can you share about yourself? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? Uh, and, and just listening to people. And, and hearing those stories, though, sometimes it's, like I say, you know, we could hire another social worker, we could do more programs. We're, we're maxed out, we're so maxed out in our space here at the church that uh, along with other community folks, we <clears throat> made uh, a plea to the Calgary Housing Company who actually in the unit beside us, uh, gave uh, in the housing project beside the church, uh, they gave us and other groups uh, one of those units to expand our work uh, because we needed more space. Uh, to, to meet the client's needs, or well, I should back up. Uh, client's needs are, we don't call people clients anymore. The people we work with, Aspen and others might refer to them as clients, uh, but we're really making the change to see these people are our neighbors. You know, they're not our clients. Um, the other thing that we're, we're really working hard at is trying to, uh, how do I put it, build community. We're trying to build the church. The church is the base of everything that happens. And how do we have a strong space to support ministry and engagement? Uh, and, you know, we say it's not about numbers a lot in the United Church of Canada. Uh, but if we don't have people and if we don't have community who makes resources available, we don't do ministry, we don't do work. Uh, so we're really working at how do we build a, a community that is sustainable, that is attractive, that uh, draws people to it, that engages people in mission, that provides people perhaps with a new purpose, new meaning in life. Uh, so, you know, those are some of the challenges. Uh, the financial is always a challenge. How do we continue to fund all that we do? Um, so we do a lot of grant writing. Uh, we, we look for different ways that uh, we can find to uh, have adequate financial resources for our work. So it's exciting, it's busy, uh, it's always something new and different. And uh, yeah, that, that's uh, just a snapshot of, of, of who we are and what we're doing. Great, thank you, Tom. Um, so I I've, I've, um, have the privilege, of, I guess, of living in Calgary and have, have been witness to some of the work that's evolved with Deer Park United, and it's very exciting. We just, through News Group, just actually did a story on the community hub next door to your office so oh wonderful right yeah i didn't know about that <laughs> all right yeah I'll, I'll send you a link um all right do that so um i'd like to invite kind of people who are the participants that are on the call what's kind of you know resonating with you what questions do you have what would you like to know more of um i'd like to open it up to people if you'd like to share Anybody have a question or? Uh, I, I guess, Sarah, uh, what I'm hearing from both Martin and, uh, and Tom is that they're really community hubs. And the ministry is a part of it, but they're also engaged with the community. They're giving back to the community by getting out into the community. And I think that's really important. And I, I guess my question to uh, Christine is, in the engagement that you're doing, is it interfaith with the community? 
or is it just within the United Church? No, it's it's more um, it's there is some inter there may be some interfaith components to it. A lot of it is with people who are unchurched, um, and but I there was one that, um, one congregation who um, when they um, when the bombings happened at the mosque in Montreal, um, w we're in the midst of, you know, listening, the listening phase of the process and um, said, they said, well, you know, we don't, what can we do? We don't have, uh, it, it hasn't happened here, but we do have a mosque in, uh, I think it was Belleville. And so they took a prayer shawl to the local mosque and um, <clears throat> said, you know, we just wanted to let you know that uh, we're, we were horrified by what happened in Montreal that, um, and that our prayers are with you. And the local um, mosque was so grateful and invited them in, shared a meal with them, and then showed up in their worship service uh, to uh, offer them something as well uh, in, fall, in subsequent weeks. So it, it is, um, very little of it is actually um, within of their of of their connections are being made within the united church mostly it's with people who have no church connection one other woman uh, just one of her experiments was uh, is that she uh, has gone around to all her neighbors knocked on their doors said um you're i'm hosting coffee and refreshments on on wednesday at 11 once a month and you're welcome to come so again no it's it's outside of the church walls. Christina, second question. Are you going to do any kind of outcomes measurement uh, study as a result of what you're doing? Um, the the um, process includes an, a time of reflection and, and decision at the end of it, and we'll see then what we think needs to happen next. I'm not sure what what you would want, like what you're thinking of in terms of an outcomes uh, measurement? Well, okay, there, there's two parts to reviewing a program such as what you've created. One is recording the outputs, and that's how many people participated and how many times it took place. The more important element to me is the outcomes measurement, which is done maybe six months after the program is completed to find out the impact of the program on the people that participated, summarize those results and publish those results. So others might be able to replicate it mm -hmm. in their own community. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing to do. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Great. So Joe, I'd like to um, come back to you because I know that um, uh, I wanted to, to kind of provide an opportunity for you to share some examples of um, United Churches you've worked with who have embraced the kind of art of hosting opportunity and where that's taken them. I'll just, I'll use one example, which is M Mackay United Church in Ottawa. Um, our process is, is three steps. Basically, we hold regional events that help people um, get exposure to art of hosting and the practices. So those are like three day long regional training events. And then we support the projects or the initiatives that that, are, that, that spawns um, directly. And then, um, and then just by coaching and support and other means in a third phase, we support projects as they, um, as, as, as they uh, drill down even fur further than that. So uh, Mackay is the outcome of a regional event that was held in Kingston. And they, they brought the question to the table um, as, as by providing the content for the, for the uh, training event. They, they, they had the question, what, or they, they essentially discerned at that event the question for themselves, the five that were there, what, what, um, what would it be like for Mackay to be a good neighbor um, for, for us to be a good neighbor in our community as a congregation what 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 does that look like and what is it that we're doing or not doing that um, um, that would be part of that story and so we then uh, Alan and I have been spending some time with them over this past year 
helping them as a whole congregation have conversations using those art of hosting practices, um, both open space and uh, kind of a world cafe approach um, to, um, to ask themselves that question. And, and they've, uh, about two months ago, they, they, they said, you know, we thought that this would, this process would result in a, um, in an outcome that was a project or a, a, a new program or something like that. But what we're finding is that right now, at least, we need to stay in the conversation because the outcome is actually the deepening of relationships. And so not only within the congregation, but within all of those other um, groups and organizations that uh, you know come through the church and are part of the the, the container that that building and that church provides for the community. And so what it's resulted in this is, is an outcome that they had not anticipated, um, which is essentially a, um, a, a really broad and deeper engagement of those folks that they already knew, but they didn't really know. And so next month they're having an anniversary service and they're reaching out to um, um, all of the people that have any kind of link to the congregation as a building in some way or as a facility or as a place, a gathering place. And they're saying, we're celebrating our, you know, our, our anniversary. We're having cake and some sandwiches and we, we want you to come. And we want, we, not because we're trying to sell you on the congregation, but because we want, we want to know you better. We want to hear your stories. And so there's a deliberate uh, um, kind of process that they're setting up about an hour in, in length um at uh, at the time of their anniversary just to deepen try and further deepen those relationships through storytelling and through conversation um and uh, so, oh, one of the yeah. sorry joe when they were doing the the uh, conversation initially in the church was it just members of the church or had they invited kind of other people that were part of their world no that's the phase they're at now so they 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 discerned that they really needed to have a conversation as a community of faith um, initially, and deepen deepen that those relationships and that and, and that sense of um, um, common purpose together. And uh, be, before they uh, began, then to expand that to partners and and other community members. Although they have made some effort to go into the community just with some questions, you know, other organizations and other individuals, and ask you know. Why is it? Why are you passionate about what it is that you're doing, and how does that connect to our, uh, our 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 neighborliness? And so the whole question is surrounded, has become about being being a neighbor in the neighborhood uh, for them. And um, it's been quite it's been quite fascinating to watch that. That's that's one thing. We use a term in art of hosting circles, which is try don't you can't because of complexity you can't do fail safe. At, fail safe projects you can't because you can't figure it out you know you can't you can't make it fail safe so you have to do safe to fail which is what christine was referring to earlier than those experiments you know you have to experiment you have to try something and if it doesn't work be prepared to stop doing it you know yeah that's cool so this is an experiment this next thing it's it's safe to fail it's a safe to fail effort to engage the neighborhood great so any other questions from, from folk or from the, um, the topic guides to one another? Martin, yeah, you're on Joe, your, oh, just Joe, so Peter, Peter, would it be okay if I just check in with Martin? Cause he's actually here on his holiday and I want to make sure that if he has any questions, he has a chance to ask them. Martin, do you have anything you'd like to uh, speak to? Well, I'm going to just wrote a couple of items that I've noticed that may help in the conversation. My daughter is a librarian and the church and the library have exactly the same problems. Grandma's library was filled with books. The church is based on a book and it's printed. Both face the fact that there's change. If you look at what libraries are starting to change into, which is community hubs with space for people where people don't go shh, shh, shh all the time, you will see the blueprint for what your church 
must become in order to survive. And that's exactly what I use. My daughter is the librarian and I'm the minister. And we share ideas back and forth because they work in both environments. If you don't have community space where activities take place and people don't look at, you know, like if you go to a library and it's all books, there's a huge population that are, that's, that's daunting. I don't want to go in there, there's only books. You have to somehow open the door and make it so they want to go in because there's something there engaging for them. And the church is the same way. And there's digital ways of doing it. There's program ways of doing it. And that's the system that I use. That's why I have like a, a, a community garden outside the church because they can see what's going on in the mentality inside the church by looking outside the church. I even have a old Victorian screen door in front of the office door that in good weather is always open. So when I'm in the church, which is most of the day it seems now hosting things, it looks like, oh, look, it's the old front porch where people used to collect and talk together. Do you remember when people had front porches and they met there? Now in urban areas, they all meet on the back deck and they have privacy fences. That's the problem. You can't build community like that. You must get a front porch mentality. And that's why I live in a town in PEI that only has 2,000 people. And I walk from here to the church and I know absolutely every person on my walk. They know my three dogs. <laughs> That's how you build community, because it's a front porch mentality. Great. That's all I got to say. Hope Thank it helps. You. Thank you, Martin. And I appreciate all the thinking that's been behind those comments, thinking and living and loving. That's just, great. Can I just quickly, just quickly respond by saying one of the things they did at Mackay out of those conversations was a strawberry social out on their front lawn um back in the summer and uh was is it was just an act of neighborliness uh, similar to the front porch idea and lots of new we relationships were forged in conversations we celebrated montague's 100th anniversary by planning a event uh having waltzing lessons on our front lawn along with kite flying and croquet <laughs> so you can understand when people drive by they can understand what the church is like Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to PEI. <laughs> I think it's fine. It's um, an advantage when I'm a member of the Jane Austen Society and we learn how to waltz, right? <laughs> so I want to make sure, um, Dithia or Shahida, if you have any questions or things that are sparking your attention and your interest. I could. Uh, sorry, Shahida. Uh, I appreciate greatly all of the information that that you've all shared. And just in reference to what Tom was talking about, one of the events that my my cohort, my my uh, friend and I are planning is a fun fair for all the kids in the neighborhood, most of whose families are unchurched. We didn't manage to have that before the weather got cold, but we're hoping to become neighborly and let people see what we're, what we're up to. And I also very much appreciate hearing from all of you what, the, what some examples of how you're using this um, this process, because I believe that I believe that we as church have to stop being about programs and start being about processes. Thanks. Thanks, Dathia. Uh, Shahida, what about for you? Any questions or things that are uh, resonating with you? Well, you know, I'm just very happy to hear that uh, many of us have the same vision to reach out to our community, to get to know them, to hear what the needs are. And um, I'm very thankful for all the ideas. So I'm excited, very excited for what we're planning to do. Um, yeah, I, um, you know, our church, we also have a community garden 
that actually has about 50 plots which are being allocated to 50 families and uh, and it's so wonderful to see everybody in their gardens and greeting and you know us going over there and meeting them and yeah sharing good news with them you know and yeah as a as our church you know um the trinity united uh, in winnipeg we also do offer so many uh, uh, projects with regards to having a yoga class we have an english class for those that can't speak english uh, we have a um exercise class we have quilters coming to do quilting and so many more you know so we want to spread this to the community and say come come and join us and uh yeah it would be so wonderful so thank you so much for that i was able to be part of this conversation and uh yeah good luck to everybody Great. Thank you. Well, Shahida is very kind of graciously and gently moving us into a bit of a checkout. So I'd really like to um, encourage each of you to just take, you know, 30 seconds and say, what's staying with you from this call? What's been the gift or the piece that you're taking away from, uh, from our time together? So, uh, Peter, would you like to start? Sure. <laughs> I'm working with... Uh two churches in Hamilton who are closing and forming a new church. And one of the things they're going to do is they're setting up their sanctuary to run concert events in their sanctuary. And my takeaway from the group is that they're doing the right thing. They're engaging with the community and giving back to the community. Great, thank you, Peter. Christine? Uh, I guess what's staying with me is, uh, again, the common uh, thread of that it's about uh, creating relationships and um, that uh, the church has um, gifts that it has to offer in terms of, um, of how to, uh, knowing what is needed in, to create relationships and therefore creating community. Thank you, Joe. I'm just thrilled to hear what some of the other uh, uh, participants have uh, shared um, in the things that are happening in their uh, in their neighborhoods and in their con congregations. It's uh, exciting to know that that's the there's a new a new uh, um, chapter I think in uh, in our life cycle as a denomination um, that's emerging and it's uh, exciting to hear those stories. Great, thank you. Tom, what about for you? I'm really grateful to hear other people's stories and uh, to feel the excitement, the energy, to know that there's spirit among us in, in the United Church and in our work. I'm interested in learning more about the art of hosting. Uh, certainly we could use a bit more skills. Sorry, we can't hear you very well. I said I'm excited about maybe learning more about the art of hosting. Uh, we could certainly use some more skills, even though we've been at this a while, uh, to continue to engage our community and uh, to continue to, um, to do what God's calling us to do. Great. Thank you. Dithya, did you want to say any other, other parting words? Just to say that the gift for me is hearing these voices and inspiration. Great, thank you. Martin, and your lovely wife who's somewhere off to the side. She's actually knitting over here. Yeah, yeah, there. and there's a dog. I don't know, there's, they're around here somewhere. At least they're being quiet. <laughs> Anyways, I should say that I think, Sarah, you know I'm going to be retiring in 2018, and when they do the joint needs assessment, and try to determine what a minister should do. I'm making sure that being a good host and knowing how to make good coffee and tea <laughs> is on the list because that seems to be a huge portion in making things successful uh, as a community member. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been a, an absolute pleasure to uh, spend this time with you and um, 
thank you for um, the great stories and the wisdom and um, the ideas also that, that are holding the work that you're all doing. So um, uh, yeah, this is, I think this would make a great call to, um, to share with folk you know that might be kind of on in, in this zone, um, asking these kinds of questions. It would give a great kind of um, introduction and a kind of sampler um, that I think could be really helpful. So thank you very much and um, please um, complete the survey and um, check out the rest of the online conversations and see if there's any others you want to join. You can become a regular like Martin, that would be great. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. And we can all wave say bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.